Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing the things that I recently bought. Um, so about a week ago I went on Amazon and I bought quite a few books. Um, I had been needing to buy books and there was more than I probably, you know, quote unquote need to buy just because they're new releases and I would like to read them. So I need them in my possession. Um, but I bought um, some of the ones that I've been wanting, some backlist books that weren't new releases but I had been wanting anyway. So I got some of those and I did that. Then I got um, a few stationary things. So I got um, some stuff for my journals um, and um, I have a reading like journal, bullet journal, and a movie teen TV bullet journal which are all inspired by books with Chloe slash journal with Chloe. Um, I really love the way that she does them and I find my, I like love, you know, filling out the days that I've read and filling out um, all the books that I've read and I like kind of collecting them in like one space that's a physical copy of it because I have Goodreads but I don't always like Goodreads because I can't physically hold it in my hand like if I want to next year or whatever I can just grab my 2020 bullet journal and start flipping through it and seeing you know how much I read and what books were my favorite and like a really long review on it and just an overview but it's more in-depth than I think Goodreads can be so I have that and I have um I make spreads on like my favorite books and my favorite tv shows so I got some stuff for that as well without further ado let's start telling you the haul so I'm gonna start with quote unquote backlist books, um, which I'm just gonna classify them as books that weren't new releases of this year, but I still needed to get them to pick them up, so I did. So the first one is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So this is Lee Bardugo's first adult novel. Um, and to be quite honest with you, when I first heard of it, this, I didn't really want to read it. Like I had no intentions of reading it and people were giving it the raving reviews that they did the Six of Crows duology um, or the Grish trilogy. Um, so I was a little hesitant to pick it up but as more kind of fan art came out, as more that I listened to really what the story is about and kind of the characters, I actually am quite intrigued about this. Um, so honestly I don't know too much about it. All I know that it's about this girl named Alex Stern and she is at Yale and um, something, they think there's a murder mystery and it involves like the secret societies um, at Yale um, and stuff like that. So I know that, that that's what it's about. Other than that, I don't really know. I think it involves some sort of like sort of magic ghosts sort of thing. Um, but honestly couldn't tell you anything other than that. Um, so yeah, that's all I know. But I am actually really excited to read this. I have really been wanting to read this. So the first book that I got was Ninth House. So this next book that I got was Red, White, and Royal Blue. I have literally seen this everywhere. <laughs> Like everybody has read it, everybody has loved it, and again, kind of with Ninth House, initially I wasn't going to pick this up, mostly because I don't really like contemporaries. I find them very boring. Um, but the more I heard about this, the more everybody has been loving it, I definitely wanted to pick it up just to see how I would think of it, because like I said, I find contemporaries quite boring, however, this is a one about royalty. So if you don't know what this is, it is basically, it's a enemies to lovers romance of the Prince of Wales and the president's uh, son, I believe. I believe, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they like absolutely hate each other. Um, and then somehow they end up falling in love and it goes from there. So I think it's gonna be really cute, like a cute little fluffy contemporary. So yes, 
Oh, also, it's by Casey McQuiston. Sorry, I didn't say that. Um, but yeah, I'm actually kind of looking forward to this, and I don't think I'm going to read it just yet. I might read it during December as like a light, fluffy read, even though it's not really Christmas themed or like wintry holiday themed. Um, but it is light and fluffy, so I think I'm gonna read it then, but we shall see. But yes, I'm actually really excited for this surprisingly so because it's a contemporary and I don't get excited for contemporary. So the next book um, that I have is These Rebel Waves by Sarah Brosh. Brosh, I think is what it is. Is her name, how do you say it? Um, and this is a book that has been on my radar for years. Like I have been wanting this for, for a little while now. Um, and again with like all the other ones, I, okay, so let me just disclaimer for like the rest of my channel and everybody. I, if I like like a book enough to put it on my Goodreads, I don't typically go back and read it again. All I know is this is about pirates, I believe. I could be completely wrong, but I, if I put it on my Goodreads, I know at some point I wanted to read it. And if I can remember some sort of aspect of it, I typically I will pick it up to read it. So I know this is pirates. I absolutely love pirate stories. Like, they're amazing, especially when it's girl pirates. And I do believe this is girl pirates. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, again, I can't really tell you what this is about because all I know is it's about pirates. And I don't really like going into books knowing too much because I find that sometimes the synopsis gives away too much of the plot and I'm like in the middle of the book and I'm like well yeah I already know this is gonna happen and I don't really think that that's what it should be like you should be, have bare minimum to grip you but not to the point where you're you know a quarter you know halfway into the book and you're still have the stuff that's happening in the um, synopsis so I don't really like reading it because if I read it at one point and I added it to my Goodreads and I bought it, I assume it was because I wanted to read it. So the next five books are all new releases. Um, one of them is a sequel and I'm going to start with the sequel. So the first book is Blood and Hug Honey by Shelby Maharin. Um, this is the sequel to Serpent and Dove. And I have started this, I'm about 140 pages into it, and I am enjoying it, but it feels a little slow. Um, not much has happened, and I'm not quite sure I like the dynamic between the characters right now, um, just because I'm annoyed that they're annoyed at each other. <laughs> um, but this is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, and Serpent and Dove is about um, witches, so it's about um, Louise LeBlanc, everybody calls her Lou, and she is a, Louise is a witch, and she's living in, um, Cesarin, so it's a, I forget, I don't know exactly how to say it, but the entire country is named Valterra, like in her land, and she's living in, like, the main city where the king lives and everything, and you follow her, and then you follow Reed, who is a chasseur. Um, and they are witch hunters, and with a crazy turn of events, something, they end up having to get married, and it kind of just goes from there, and it's like a whole, whole thing. It's a lot more than that, but if I said anything else, it would probably give away too much. So, just know, that's kind of what happens, and it's about, like, their story. But this is the second book, and it follows immediately after the events of that book, and I'm not going to tell you what this one's about, because that would be spoilers. But, um, like I said, I am liking it. It's just not as, I don't know, I feel like it's not as fulfilling as it could have been. Granted, I'm only 140 pages and after this I could absolutely love it, but I am, I am liking it. Okay, the next book was a, I think, July release, Divine Blood by Beck Michaels. Um, and <laughs> I said that I wanted to read this on my most anticipated reads for summer of 2020 and then I hadn't gotten it so I did buy it. Um, I think I have a better synopsis there but essentially all I know is this is about an adventure between two people and one of them is Cassiel and he's a celestial prince and he has wings and I was like 
okay, cool, people with wings, sold. And that's really all I know about it. All I know is that they have to go on an adventure together for some reason. Couldn't tell you why, but I know they have to go on an adventure somewhere. So yeah. Oh, and look at the, I quite like that. The chapter headings have like this tree and bird on all of them, which is really pretty. And I actually quite like the cover. And let me tell you, this is a very interesting book because the spine feels and looks like it would crack if I'm opening it. But if I do this, it doesn't crack. So it's almost like a stiff but floppy paperback. It's a very strange feeling and the cover is really soft. So yeah, there's that. But yes. the next book, I don't think anybody, <laughs> I don't think anybody is going to be like, what is that book? And honestly, I sort of don't know what this book is again, but honestly, that is sort of the theme of all of these books. And that book is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, I don't know what this is really about, other than people have been comparing it to Sarah J. Mass, um, J. Mass's books, which I love her, and that's pretty much it. Um, I believe it follows this girl named Poppy, which I love the name Poppy, um, and she has a role to play in the kingdom. Um, and I don't exactly know if she's reluctant to fulfill that role or if she wants to fulfill that role. Um, but yeah, she has a very important role in the kingdom and everybody has been raving about this book. And it is Books with Chloe's Patreon book club pick next month for November. So that's hopefully when I'm going to be reading it. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, I couldn't tell you really what this book was about other than everybody's been raving about it and that it's about a girl named Poppy. And it's kind of like a Sarah J Maas book. But yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to reading this. Like I said, everybody has been raving about it. Everybody absolutely loves it. So I hope that I actually love it as well. And I think I'm going to just because like I said, it's compared to Sarah J Mass books, and I love Sarah J Mass books. Like I don't think there's a book she has out that I don't really like. So we'll see. But this is this is a chunker, and this one is kind of an annoying paperback because it's like floppy. But this one, I think you can, you will actually like crack the spine when you read it, which I'm a little hesitant about because I don't like crack spines. Next book just came out, I think last month or the very beginning of this month, and that is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Um, this, <laughs> sensing a theme, honestly couldn't really tell you what this is about other than it follows a girl and she goes to the Sholomonts, Schoolamont, and it's a school of magic. Um, and it's kind of about her journey. Look at the inside of this book. This is the, the map. Actually, there's a map further in, but it's just so gold. And like, I just, I love the gold. Um, but yeah, it just follows this, this girl as she is in the school. And I think people, it starts attacking. Somebody starts attacking people at the school and they have to kind of figure out who it is. Um, but that's all I know. Um, everybody has been giving it, well, I honestly don't think I've heard many reviews about this one. I've seen it a lot on Bookstagram, um, people hauling it, and haven't really heard of anybody who have read this yet, but I think it'll be quite good. Like, people really love Naomi Novik. I haven't read one of her books, but I do own Uprooted, which is one of her books. Um, so... I'm, just, I'm interested to see because everybody was like very very excited about this but I really haven't heard anybody review this or what their thoughts of after they read it so I'm interested to see what my thoughts are and then when it starts populating about other people's thoughts see if they match or if they don't match but we shall see so the last book that I have is Crown Chasers by Rebecca Coffendaffer um, and this one I sort of know what it's about, but the biggest reason that I picked it up was because people were comparing it to 
Aurora Rising. Yeah, people were comparing it to like Aurora Rising in the sense that it has a group and like a cast of characters. Um, and I absolutely love Aurora Rising and Aurora Burning. I like Aurora Burning more than I like Aurora Rising, but it is what it is. Um, I do actually really love that series. Um, and this is basically about this girl, what is her name? Her name's Alyssa Farshot, and her family is extremely wealthy, and um, every she doesn't really want to be a part of her family, she doesn't really like them, um, but she's set to inherit everything of her family, and I don't know if they have a company or something, um, but... Oh, he's emperor. Interesting. So anyway, so apparently um, her uncle becomes ill and instead of just passing on the crown to Alyssa, he does this thing called, I think it's the crown chase. Yes. He calls for a crown chase, which is the first in seven centuries. And basically it's um, tons of families and their champion competes um, and they have to, I think it's they have to go find a whole bunch of stuff and bring it back and the first one to do that ends up being put like as the new emperor. That's all I know. But yeah, that's kind of all I know. And the cover of this book is absolutely gorgeous. And like, I don't know if you can really tell, but like the girl on the front, it's like she's so like overlaid with like galaxy. And then down here, there's a person oh no there's two people there's like a spaceship and like a planet and like rocks and stuff i don't know but i think this is going to be like a really good spacey sci-fi novel which i actually quite enjoy spacey sci-fi novels um kind of like this um, okay so the next things that i got are all stationary related and or journaling related so the first thing, and I threw away the box, so I only have the package, but um, I needed refills. So for my journaling, I have a Canon IV, like mini IV photo printer, and it basically prints photos that are this, this size, but it's like on photo paper. Um, and I think it's normally used for like, um, printing out pictures of like people and like your friends and putting them places, but I use it in my journal. So I needed a refill because I was running low and I use it in my like movie and TV bullet journal. And I also use it in, actually I use it in all of my journals. So running low or running out of this would be a very bad thing. So I just got the refills. This year I had wanted to do a Christmas theme spread or like a wintry theme spread for December obviously it's Christmas and holidays are seasons around but I didn't have any Christmassy um, you know washi tape stickers anything that I could really use in my journal um, so I bought some for this year so I have um, there's a few different rolls I think there's six in total um, and So there's, there's six in total, um, and there's like a reindeer one, there's one that kind of just looks like Christmas wrapping paper, there's a few, there's some gingerbread ones, some like antlers, some like ones that just have messages on them. Um, so yes, oh, I keep forgetting, I need to swatch these. Oh, I'm so excited to swatch these when I'm done with this. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting these. I. I'm really excited to use them. They seem like they're gonna be okay quality. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to use these for December, but I wanted to get them now because chaos of the seasons, you know, we have Halloween coming up. My next month in November is chaotic and then we have Thanksgiving that then, and then December comes around and that's finals. And I just wanted to have it prepared for when I do the spreads. And I can also use it for my, um, what do you call it? Um, my dedicated spreads for Christmas movies. <gasps> I'm so excited. 
You have no idea how excited I am to use these. Next two things that I bought kind of go together. So I had been wanting a set of letter stamps. So I got them and I'm hoping that I can open this. This just, first off, I love this box. Like, what? I did not think it was gonna come in like a little wooden box with like this cute little clasp. Like it's adorable. The only thing it's a bit of a pain in the butt because um, they kind of move around a little and when I first got it, they actually got stuck to the top of the lid and they were put in upside down and they got stuck and it was just a mess and I didn't have time to organize them at the time so I just kind of shoved them back in. But the other day I finally had time to organize them. So there's lowercase, uppercase, and then there's um, one through zero. Then there's like the ampersand and a period and an exclamation point and a quote and a parenthesis and a colon and a dash and a question mark. Is there no semicolon? That kind of sucks, there's no semicolon. But there's pretty much everything else known to man. Um, or at least in the English language. So then to kind of go, to go along with that, obviously I need ink. And originally I was just going to get, um, a, just a regular black ink. But then I saw this pack called Pimland. It's P-M-L-A-N-D. Um, and this pack has 12 different colors. Um, and the biggest reason I got it was because it had a silver, a black, and a gold. Um, and I was really excited to use those, but there's also tons of different other colors. There's like a blue, there's red, there's pink, there's green, there's yellow. And then the last thing that I got was red bubble stickers. Now I'm going to show you a stack that this is the amount of stickers that I've had. This is the amount of stickers that I've gotten like over the year, well maybe not over the years, but like over the time that I've shopped at Redbubble. I did not get all of these in one swing, um, nor are all of these from this previous purchase, but I organized them all and I don't really feel like taking them all out and reorganizing them. So this is the stack. Um, the tabs on top are all of the different fandoms and then the tabs on the side are all of the different categories. So I have movie, book, and TV. Um, fandom. So, you know, I got some pirate stickers the last time, like Pirates of the Caribbean stickers. I got some Elite stickers. I got some Enola Home stickers because Enola Homes is like one of my new favorite things. Um, I got some more Sarah J. Mass specific um, stickers. I got some selection stickers, some Serpent and Dove stickers, some Avatar stickers because I'm obsessed with Avatar now, The Last Airbender. Um, so yeah, I just got a whole bunch of different stickers and I absolutely love them and I cannot wait to use them in my spreads. That is all for my recently bought haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave the links to pretty much everything that I had down below. Oh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you give my video a like and maybe consider subscribing because I have tons of cool, fun, bookish content and I am really trying to create a lot more now and I will see you in my next video. Bye!